continuous improvement. Now that is an HR buzzword that's thrown around a lot. But what does it mean? Well, continuous improvement is more of an ideal to strive for. I'm about to go over a few ways you can start creating a continuous improvement mindset for yourself and how you can start to implement some of these things in your day-to-day -day work life. Let's get into it. So when it comes down to this, you need to pay better attention. That is the core of what we're trying to talk about here. What do I mean by paying better attention? Well, I mean, you really need to understand all of the processes that you interact with on a daily basis. So when it comes down to it, I want you to know those processes that you interact with daily, inside out and upside down. I want you to almost be able to explain the process completely backwards. And that actually might be helpful in getting to the next part which is trying to do a value stream map, which is something you might've heard if you've ever done any Six Sigma or any lean anything. A value stream map, what I mean is you understand the process now, and now you need to start figuring out where the value moves throughout the process, like a stream, and you need to try to figure out where there can be some improvements made. Now, these can be large improvements where you'd need lots of stakeholder input, and lots of sign-offs and things, or it could be small things like you're fiddling with an Excel macro and you can make it more efficient and then pass that out to your group. It could be that simple. So you have a macro or some sort of process improvement where you understand the process so well that you can come up with novel ideas to try to improve the process. Then you can go and take effective credit for increasing the efficiency or productivity of your group which can only help when it comes to promotion and raise time. This is why continuous improvement is often thrown around because it's something where you can continually show value if you always have your eyes open. Instead of just having your head down and doing whatever task it is repetitively, you can pay better attention and you can really get a lot more out of understanding the intricacies and why you're doing specific things. This is where I think engineers and technicians typically have a divide, where technicians typically, they're given a process, they just do the process. Whereas an engineer, I always am asking, why are we doing this? Or why are we doing it this way? Because it seems like this is an inefficient way. And most of the time, there's a pretty logical reason why it's being done this way, but sometimes there isn't, or it could be even worse. We always do it this way. That's the closest thing to a trigger that I have when I'm at work. And when I hear those words, sometimes I just want to hang up the phone. <laughs> so if this is something where people are not paying attention so much that it's literally part of the culture at times. And I haven't had to deal with this for quite a while. But when you do deal with it, it can be very frustrating. And understanding the process, knowing what sort of influence you have over changing the process and working to do those little continuous improvement steps continuously it's in the bloody name, really will help you when it comes to getting a promotion or getting better raises than your peers. Do you have some really cool continuous improvement tips you could share? I'd love a comment down below because I am always on the hunt for better continuous improvement ideas. How do you go about implementing your continuous improvement ideas? Well, you need to go and have the appropriate stakeholders sign off on things. So I'm not telling you to go do things well out of your lane or do things without stakeholder buy-in. I'm not saying that at all. You need to get everything approved and make everyone happy as they can be. And then you need to start getting feedback from your improvements. So if you've gotten some improvements into the process, now you need to get some feedback and then this becomes an iterative process. So once you already know how to improve the process, and then you get some feedback and then you can further improve the process and you can see how this can be very efficient over time. This is why I'm trying to get you to have a continuous improvement mindset because it's something that's going to help you as you get further and further in your career. Developing this mindset doesn't really need to take long, but I would say that you probably shouldn't rock the boat too much right when you get somewhere because that will cause people to rebel if you come in and say, oh, you guys are doing this completely the wrong way or, you know, because you kind of be calling out the organization for being inefficient. And that's not going to make you any friends if you just got into a new organization. 
So you need to spend some time and thoroughly understand all the processes you need to interact with on a daily basis. And then you can start looking for continuous improvement opportunities because it's gonna be hard for you to improve things that you don't understand. And after that, all you need to do is keep iterating. I know you got a lot out of this EQ topic. If you want some more EQ, I got a whole playlist up here. Or if you're ready to move to social intelligence or SQ, I got a playlist for that down here. Or you can keep doing what you're doing and getting the results you've been getting. Up to you.